you you address some of the positives certainly right off the bat uh can you talk about though uh where this move uh leaves you i'm sure you're still looking for some uh, some help on defense more uh, cap flexibility this is kind of seen as the uh as a precursor just some other stuff you might do this summer yeah certainly um you know i i don't think this is going to be it for us um as we go along and i think the key is you touched on it in your in your question lance is that, uh, that we need to gain some flexibility or greater flexibility than what we have. And we've got our own business to take care of with uh, with Dermot and Mikheyev as restricted free agents. And this will give us some space uh, beyond them to to sort of address all, all the other needs uh, that we feel that we have. So um, without the flexibility or, or the space to, to do so uh, freely, we would be, uh, we'd be really um, restricted in what we can do. And, and this opens it up a little bit for us. Thanks. And a follow-up you touched on, on, on Hollander. What exactly uh, do you like about him? Uh, he, he's a, you know, he's a player going back to the draft that, uh, you know, we, it was right at, at the, near the top of our board when we picked in the second round and um, um, we selected uh, Sean Dersey and then Pittsburgh selected him the pick right after, if my memory serves me correctly. And um, you know, he's, he was right there for us. We we're kind of hoping he would fall to the, to the next pick that we had gotten in a previous trade. Um so we, we kind of knew we, we had done a lot of work on him leading up to the draft and John Lilly and Tim Speltz and, and Ari Vori and our staff um, had done great work on him. So we, we knew about him last year. He had an injury that, that cost him, you know, really the, the, the fall in the first half of the year and then had uh, returned and, and played really well. The things we like about him as a player that extremely intelligent, very competitive and uh, has shown very well playing in the Swedish elite league on a very good team and program in Lulia and, uh, and, and among their top lines as well. So we're excited uh, for him. We think he'll, he'll certainly add to our depth uh, in our prospect pool up front. And, and we're really excited to add Philip today. Great. Thanks. We'll move to Mark Masters from TSN. Go ahead, go ahead Mark. To assess the try, try again there, Mark. Kyle, uh, how do you assess the free agent market when it comes to defensemen this year? We, we haven't. I mean, it's I, I think assessing the free agent market is, is really difficult right now, Mark, just because it's so different than anything else uh, that we face just with the, the cap where it is and, you know, different cash restrictions on, on all teams in the league and, and what you're able to do. So, um, you know, there's certainly I mean, I, we can look at the list right now and there are certainly a, a number of players that that have been very good NHL players for a long time. Um, and, and And that's obviously a positive, but knowing what the market's going to bear out for them in terms of opportunity and, and contracts, I think is really difficult right now. So we'll go through our uh, continue through our preparations and evaluating them as players. And then we'll see whether there may be any fits in that regard or, or via trade um, as we continue to bolster our roster. It sounds like it's going to be a, a really deep draft. Are you open to moving that first round pick uh, or do you right now foresee yourself keeping that and, and what sort of player do you think you could get there? No, well, I mean, I mean, I, 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 I would say that we're, I would say that we're open to to doing, um, you know, certainly to to keeping the pick, but I think we're the spot that we're at with our with our team right now. We're also open probably to moving it if the right deal came along for for someone that could that could help us now. But um, we'll go through as though we're we're going to be selecting there at fifteen, and um, you know, we've, the scouts led by John Lilly have, have done a great job already uh, in in readying. Um, us for if we were to acquire another pick in that range. And so um, I think we're, we're well prepared there. And I think there's, there's players at every position, forward, defense, and goalie um, that are, that are of, of interest to us at that spot. Thanks, Mark. We'll go uh, Jonas Siegel from The Athletic. Hey, Kyle, how do you want to put that cap space to work? Um, or in other words, where do you see your needs? Yeah, uh, I think anywhere where we can improve our roster over over where it was, Jonas, are, um, is how we want to use the cap space. And the reality is that there, there's two ways to look at it. I think there's you could use it in the off season, or you could let it accrue during the year, and then let the team get into the year and see what the needs are in the season, and then let it let it accrue and use it then. Um, I think it's also going back to to the previous uh, to one of the previous questions about the free agent market. I think it was from Mark. Um, seeing the way that that dollars are, are spread out, or the way that the market changes from previous years, will give us a good insight into where we want to use the space as well. So, um, 
I'd love to be able to give a, a definitive answer on exactly how, um, but I think we have to, we, we wanted this flexibility so that we could be flexible uh, inside the marketplace for either free agents or, or for trades. And, and so we'll keep an open mind about that. And we'll also keep an open mind to the fact that it would be great for us next year during the season to accrue space so that we could add uh, once we got into the year uh, via trade, something that we really haven't been able to do for, for a while. Uh, really aside from the Muzzin deal. Um, so that would be, that would be a nice benefit to us to be able to stay flexible during the season also. Well, is there a type of player that you want to add like Muzzin types? Like, is there an embodiment that you're looking for? If there's another Jake Muzzin, we would, we would certainly be, be interested um, to, to put it mildly. I, I think we, we're still going through our process of evaluating the, you know, once you get through the emotional disappointment of it in the, in the first few days after where, I think everybody's really, really disappointed with the way it go. You can look back at the series against Columbus and the season at large as objectively as possible and not so emotionally. And so, you know, myself, Shani, Sheldon, and our staff will continue to go through that and, and identify, you know, what we feel that we need up front and on the back end. Um, and then we'll um, and then we'll have a look at um, the players who are available in trade or free agency and, and address it as best as possible. Thanks, Jonas. We'll go Kevin McGran from the uh, Toronto Star, please. Kevin. So, so Kyle, just, uh, just wanting to understand, is this the only trade that you have to make to give yourself the cap flexibility, or might there be more along these lines for this season's cap flexibility that you need? Well, I, I just think this, yeah, it's, I don't know the, uh, I guess the, the, the most honest answer I can give you, Kevin, is, is I don't, uh, I don't know. Um, and this gives us flexibility if we wanted to become uh, even more flexible or wanted to do some, some bigger things with, um, with different types of players, depending on their salary level, we could certainly continue to look to make moves like this, um, for, I think with this exercise is showing us that our players do have good value around the league and, um, you know, we could, we could accrue, uh, solid, uh, assets in return for them, uh, should we like to do so. Um, so right now we, we feel good about where we're at, but we'll have a better idea of what more we may need to do as we gather more information, uh, as the season comes to a close and the teams that are still playing, um, kind of to give their evaluation of where they need to proceed to, to get ready for next season as well. So I, I just, I, I don't mean to, to duck the question. I just think it's so tough right now to know what more we'll need, but this was a good start to getting to where we want to go. And you spoke um, two or three Zoom calls ago, I think, about how different the landscape is, both from what the cap is going to be and in terms of developing young players and that fans shouldn't necessarily worry if a guy goes back to Russia or Sweden because you're, you basically want to get as many guys playing as possible. Can, are you closer to knowing where everybody's going to be at this point? And can you speak just a little bit about the need to have players play? at this point in their development? Yeah, I think that the players are some of, depending on where they're at, I think it's so, it's so different, right? It depends on if they're, they're very physically mature and they, they, we feel they just need to work on various different things with their game. And, and thus it's important to get them loaned and, and playing games. Conversely, there may be guys that they're, they're excellent on the ice, but what's preventing them from playing in the NHL and, and playing at their best in the NHL is just their physical strength. And so this, this sort of pause can be a blessing on both ends of it, Kevin. If you're physically mature and in a good spot physically and you need the game action, you get a bit of a bonus here where, where I mean, we're, the NHL is in the playoffs now and some of these European leagues are getting back up and starting so you can accrue some games in that experience. Conversely, if you're uh, a little bit behind physically, you can um, – you can use this time off where there are no games for, for the majority of teams in hockey now, 23 teams in the NHL. And you can use this period to really put the work in to, to get your body to the spot it needs to be. So I think it's, it's a, it's a question that doesn't have a, a very generic answer. It's based really uh, on the individuals and where they're at. And so that, that I guess would be the the key uh, for us in looking at it in Hollander's case, the player we just acquired, that was a loan agreement that was done with Lulia before, uh, the trade and of which we're 100% on board with honoring where, um, you know, he's, he's there. And if he, uh, he can come to training camp and if he makes the team great, and if not, he gets loaned back. Now they were an excellent team last year and should be an excellent team this year and are a great program. So it's not overly, uh, that, that's, that's a good setup for us with him, which was also appealing. Thanks, Kevin. We'll go to Josh Clipperton from the Canadian press. Go ahead, Josh. Hey, Kyle, thanks for doing this. Um, just 
you and uh, Jim have basically fired off the first offseason salvo in a league in a league with this move. I'm just wondering, looking ahead a little bit, you know, you mentioned the salary cap staying flat for the foreseeable future. What this offseason, especially with the draft and free agency, when it opens up with so little money available to a lot of teams and a lot of uncertainty, what it's going to look like across the league, do you think? Oof. Um, it, it's it's going to be very different. I think just because of the, the, the nature of how quickly everything's going to transpire after the playoffs end as, as well. Um, Josh will, will, will certainly have some influence on it. And um, it, it's really tough to say how uh, like the, the types, if different teams want to move on from different players, they're trying to shift them around, how that's going to impact the free agent landscape and whether you're more willing to move assets for players or, or, or use cap space or cash. Right. And, um, I think it's really tough to pro- project all that out until we have a greater um, feeling on the um, uh, on the pandemic and the way it's going to affect attendance and all those different things. So I, I think the unknowns right now are, are, are at a level still far beyond hockey. And until we kind of get a better sense of the way that's all going to be impacted, I think it'll be tough to really gain as great insight into the free agent market and trade market as, as possible. What's the last few weeks been like for you since the, the team went out? I mean, there's obviously been criticism in some circles. I'm just wondering what that's like. You, you know the job and the market you're in and, you know, the pressures. I'm just wondering what it's been like for you personally. It's, it's been, I think, um, when, when we don't uh, reach our expectation or potential, uh, I think that the blame deserves to come directly to me. Um, and, and I know that um, this is the, the job that, uh, that I signed up for and, and in a market like this, um, it, it's great because when things are great, people are, are very quick to tell you uh, and and um, and give you your kudos. And then when when you uh, when you don't meet those expectations, they're they're quick to honestly tell you as well. So uh, the criticism, uh, Josh, I would say is is deserved. Um, we didn't reach expectations, and that falls on me. And um, the last couple of weeks has has just been. Uh, meeting with our staff and, and starting to slowly now, uh, rather than do it the, right the morning after and rush it along, start to have in-depth conversations with our players and um, you know go through and, and start to go about our business of our offseason and improving the team. So uh, I don't take any of it uh, personally. I, I know that um, the criticism is deserved and, and uh, I accept that. And um, that's, that's one of the great parts of being here is I, I often, I, I think it's fair as well. So, um, and, and that's fine. Thank you. Uh, We will go to Chris Johnson from Sportsnet. Go ahead, Chris. Hey, Kyle. Uh, I'm wondering after doing what you did, looking at your team, you know, do you feel that your forward depth is still strong enough that you could make another trade similar to this one and and remove another player if if that deal made sense? Uh, I I think it would really, it would really depend. I think as we saw this year, Chris, and and not knowing what the schedule is going to be like next year and how quickly the games are going to happen and different things like that. I think depth is something we really have to be, uh, careful about. Um, that's why it was important for us to have Rodriguez in the deal um, as well and begin to have a conversation with, with his representatives about the opportunity that may be here for him. So without without knowing, I, I'd be a little bit tentative about the rest of it without knowing uh, what the schedule, what the season is really going to look like. Because if, if the games are uh, in a compressed format um, or or there's lots of travel still, I would worry about uh, leaving uh, Sheldon and, and the team in a bad spot if we depleted the depth further. Thank you. We'll go to Justin Cuthbert from Yahoo Sports. Go ahead, Justin. Hey, Kyle. Uh, did you detect a ceiling on Kapanen? And, and how much did his path or the path of his development uh, factor into the, de- the decision ultimately to move on from him? Yeah, I, I don't think Kasperi has has reached his his ceiling yet, uh, Justin. I, I think he's he's got lots of room to continue to grow and develop. I think the, the, what it came down to from us was we know we've got William and Mitch on on the right side um, there, and and we just felt that we could we could deal from that next sort of collection of um, of forwards, and and um, you know he was he was just this deal we, we felt was the best fit for us in terms of the flexibility and the draft pick and the prospect coming back. So um, no, nothing, nothing to do with, with what we felt with, with him and, and reaching a ceiling or anything like that. Thanks. We'll go two final questions. Josh Cloak from the athletic and then Dave McCarthy from NHL.com to round it out. Josh Cloak, go ahead. 
Hey Kyle, you kind of touched on this, but what have you seen from Philip that gives you confidence he'll be an NHL player for you one day? Uh, yeah, I think um, I think Josh, it's it's just the way that he's played uh, in Lulia in the SHL as a very young player, especially last year at um, at 19 years old. Um, the way that he uh, played near the top of the lineup on a very good team um, and was responsible and, and played in all situations and and uh, was very responsible at both ends of the ice. Um, his intelligence and ways that he plays the game, in addition to his talent level and his competitiveness, were were the things that really stood out to us. And then in, in doing sort of the background work on him, and it hasn't been that long since the draft. So we had done it uh, two years ago as well, going into the draft in Dallas. And then following that up again here, we had, um, you know, we had really kind of found that, you know, his car- he's got excellent character, his work ethic is excellent, very little maintenance with him and will do everything he can to improve um, and, and very well liked by his coaches. So um, those are the areas of the game that, that we felt most confident in that, that will translate to being able to play uh, the way that we want to play and, and add to our mix just with um, the way that he plays, how competitive he is and, and how intelligent he is and responsible. Thanks. Great. Thanks. And we'll round out with uh, Dave McCarthy, NHL.com. Go ahead, Dave. Hey, Kyle. Just uh, wondering, in terms of uh, probably the two top RFAs that you've got on the roster in, in Ilya McKayev and Travis Dermott, um, how far along in terms of progress are you in, in terms of uh, contract discussions? And how would you rate um, the season that each each guy had? Obviously, Ilya missed a lot of it, but uh, how would you rate and assess uh, how they performed this year? Well, I, I think we've we'll get we'll get into those discussions with them. I think you know there, there's there's always you know Brandon is always in touch with the the agents and and vice versa with, with him. And so you know Brandon will will have those discussions that are that are ongoing. And um, I don't think either situation is overly complex in terms of uh, the contract. And Mikheyev's case, he's arbitration eligible, so it has a it has a natural solution if it's not done before that. Um, and, and in Dermot's case, he doesn't have arbitration rights. So, uh, Mikheyev's is a really tough one to evaluate, um, just because of the injury. And, um, you know, he, he came back and, uh, you know, he was excellent in the training camp. He worked his butt off and, and it just did, in the series against Columbus just didn't go in for him. Uh, and that can, that can happen, but, uh, you know, he's great character, great work ethic and very valuable, versatile forward for us can go up and down the lineup and, and really plays well on the penalty kill. So. We're obviously uh, excited about uh, about him and and uh, where he'll be going with us in the coming years. And in Travis's case, um, you know, I thought the opportunity for him, especially um, near the end of February, there where, when we had Morgan and um, in Jake Muzzin out, um, gave him a chance to play up in the lineup and really continue to show the potential that we all know he has. And um, you know, we we continue to need Travis to. I mean, he's a young defenseman, and it um, it doesn't happen overnight and it's not linear. He's, uh, he's had some great moments for us and now it's just a matter of continuing to, to work with Travis and he, he puts it all in off the ice and just continue to have it correspond to helping him reach his potential on the ice. But both are, both are very good players and, and uh, are a big part of things here and we'll look forward to getting their situations taken care of and get them focused on next season. Great. Thanks. Thanks guys.